Hey everybody, Wendy Clinky with Blue Cat Studio. We are going to mess around with some scrap wood. I got this, it's just kind of a cast off from somebody's, I don't even know what, it's got a hole, it's super rough. If I rub my fingers on it too much, I'm gonna get a splinter. So let's make it, let's turn it into some art. So I just squeezed some ultramarine blue onto it and I'm grabbing just a nice wide, like one inch brush. And I'm gonna grab a little bit of water as well to kind of soften that color and let it blend more easily. I'm really actually gonna try to just add like a blue sort of ultramarine stain to this wood and just a surface. I'm gonna do my best to avoid the edges, just kind of scrubbing that color right in. So as you come on, go ahead and say hi. And if you, if you know someone who you think would enjoy this video, Maybe maybe help me out here. What that does is the more the more of those I get, the more um, the more folks see it, and the easier it is for me to keep bringing you fun videos. All right, adding just a little bit more water because I've got some thick spots of paint, and then also some less thick spots. I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of run that through. All right, now that I've got a good coating of it. Kind of letting that blue seep in and sink in for a minute. I'm gonna offload my, my blue paint on a scrap piece. Oh, hey, I'm just going right off camera. What's going on? Okay, so from there, I'm gonna actually grab a baby wipe. Where'd I put it? I just had them. You know, I've been making them all day long. You think I know where I put my baby wipes. Okay. So now we're gonna take our handy dandy baby wipe and we're gonna just sort of go ahead and start rubbing and scrubbing some of that blue off. The goal here, and notice it's a lot of it is coming up, is to give it more of a stain look versus a completely opaque, just blue. I want the deep blues to sink into the, the rough wood grains and then some of the smoother parts to just give up the, the, the color altogether. Okay, so that's pretty good. So now we've got, throw that in the trash so I don't get any more blue going on. So we now have kind of a basic blue wood grain tone thing here, right? That's kind of fun. I'm gonna give it a quick blast with a hairdryer just to make sure that it's not too wet when we're working with it. And the beauty of this particular project is we're working with such thirsty wood that it's really just going to take all the paint super nicely. Okay, so now I'm going to grab a, um, a wave stencil. I just picked this up on Amazon. I just threw the package away. I'll have to figure it out. But if you want the link, just come in um, stencil in the, in the uh, comments and I will make sure to share with you where I got mine so you can get some as well. Okay. So next up, we're gonna take like a bristly brush. It's kind of a round stenciling brush. And we'll squeeze some of this. This is the Sergeant Art Turquoise. I have my own nickname for it. Well, I call it Cerulean because it's just such a beautiful, intense color. All right, and while I'm at it, I'm also gonna grab a little bit of gesso. And I'm going for gesso instead of white acrylic paint because this stuff is very opaque and also because it creates um, kind of a matte chalky look. All right, so grabbing a little bit of that blue paint, I probably got too much and kind of just dab it off. And I'm gonna grab a little bit of the white, mix it in, and kind of dab it off. So I'm really getting the paint, loading the brush, and then I'm offloading. And we'll begin by just kind of stippling and creating some circles. They're just gentle circles all around. Coming back, grabbing some more. Gentle circles all around. A little bit more, and again, you see how I'm really kind of offloading, 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 I'm trying to keep it a little bit thin. And circle, 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 circle. I just got back from the beach, so I'm really feeling be beachy today. And I really just wanted to keep Keep that like beach feeling. I even got some surfing lessons. Am I any good at it? Not really. Was it fun? Absolutely. All right. So again, if you're interested in, in um, 
getting the link for where I got the stencil from Amazon, I'm happy to share it. Just t comment um, or type, what am I trying to say? Ugh. Type stencil in the comments and I will make sure to get you that link uh, as soon as I'm done creating this painting. And I love this project because sometimes, you know, it's like you see a stencil um, or you, you, you feel, you're feeling artsy, but you don't really want to draw. You're not really sure where to start. Sometimes a stencil is a really amazing way to just kind of take a design and go somewhere. Okay, so we've just gotten the blue. See, look at this. Here's, I was just testing on my background because, you know, feeling beachy. So now I'm going to grab some of the white and offload it over here to create just kind of a, a lighter blue. See how I've created that lighter blue? I'm going to come back and stipple kind of right over the the ends, the, the ends, the the ends, the tips where the, um, the the waves are cresting and curling, the part that kind of becomes white water. All right, so just little dabbles here, maybe a little extra. Now again, I can be a little bit generous with the ink on this or the ink. What's going on, girl? I can be a little bit generous with the paint on this particular one because it's very thirsty, rough wood. If this was a smoother surface, I would have to be much, much gentler. Okay, and then I'm gonna do a couple of streaks in a few spots just to keep these waves from looking completely uniform. You want little bits of color in a few spots. Ooh, a little bit of white in there. Hopefully that doesn't bleed too much, but even if it does, it's fine. Okay, so we've done some stenciling, right? Looks pretty boring, but watch this, we pull it up and it's just beautiful. I'm kind of loving this. I'm actually really superbly crazy loving this. Okay, so now that we've got that, we've kind of got the dark blue peeking through in the background. Let's get, let's keep going with that kind of like a endless summer feel, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and grab a super skinny brush. This is a triple zero, Windsor Newton, super, super skinny. And let's see, my first color will be orange. However, I think the orange is gonna have trouble. So I'm gonna grab some of my gesso and I'm gonna just create some design here. So let's see here. We will kind of come over this guy like so, and we're gonna create an outline, but with some space. In fact, we'll create a couple of these with a gesso now, that way we kind of have got a good base. So I'm gonna not connect these pieces right here. Gonna leave a little gap just for fun. I'm kind of following the outer line of this design. And again, if you're just coming on and joining us, say hi so we know you're there. If you have questions, feel free to ask them. And uh, yeah. All right, so now I'm gonna make it a little bit thicker here. So I feel like we're kind of pulling a little bit of that 70s, early 80s vibe going on here. And again, if you'd like to know where to get the stencil, just let me know, type stencil in the comments and I will make sure you get the link. And if you're enjoying this or you know someone else who might dig this, please help the girl out. All right, we're gonna keep going. And we're covering that. So again, I'm just doing the white outlines first and you could keep it white. I'm feeling colorful. I'm feeling that endless summer vibe, you know, just trying to channel whole, all the surfing that just happened this last week. Although honestly, I'm way better at boogie boarding than I am surfing. I don't know about the rest of you guys, but I tell you, if there's an ocean and there's waves, this girl just needs to get in. So feeling it. All right, here we go. A little bit more. We'll do a third line bloop. I'm going to kind of emphasize those curves a little bit, emphasize the motion. We'll come along here and then here. And again, because it's such a dark color and I'm wanting to go over it in short order with some really bright light colors, having this little white base is going to be extra helpful. And kind of thickening up over here on the edges just so you get that kind of cool wave. It's got that retro, cool, styly look. All right, now coming in through here, I'm gonna just do a little circle or a little, little bit more shaping. Hopefully you guys can kind of see those details on screen. And coming up, 
we'll do another one kind of shapes inside of shapes. And then just a single line in the middle. Bloop. So that gives it some, some motion. All right. Actually, we are going to do one more line here, but I'm going to kind of make it a little bit more solid. Boop. And that's just going to help me get a good line. OK, so go ahead and rinse off that brush. Make sure that it's all nice and clean. Use the paper towel to dry it. And I'm thinking that my inner layer should be good. So now we're going to start off with some orange. So I will grab some jack-o'-lantern orange. Pop it right here on my, my thing. And I'm going to complement that with a little bit of yellow because I want it to be a really bright color. And in fact, since we're also going to be using some pink, we're just going to put it all, all in. There we go. Oop. So I used jack-o'-lantern orange. This is folk art daffodil. And then the last one is the deco art Americana neon. And I apologize, this is like a nasty bottle. I had a pumpkin go, well, I'm a little obsessed with pumpkins and I let my pumpkin live much longer than the prescribed time. And then I forgot about it. And then it, 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 it had a little problem. So it leaked on my paint. Is that weird? That's weird. Okay. All right, so good. So now we've just mixed up kind of a tangerine orange using the canyon and the daffodil. And while I probably could find a paint that color, I sometimes have trouble getting the exact color I'm looking for. So I figure, you know what, it's that easy to mix. And mixing color, paint colors is fun, so we're gonna just go for it. Now I'm gonna literally just go right over that first white line picking up little bits of the, the gesso that's wet, not really a big deal, because I can just come over and add a little bit more orange to it. Orangey yellow, and then we'll do the outside here. Although, you know, honestly, I think I will give it a quick blast. That'll just make it a little bit more. <laughs> Okay, so here we go, coming in, getting the outer line. Oh, I'm gonna get that part dry. That's okay though. I'll just follow this line here. And I, the other thing that's nice about having put the gesso down is the gesso um, will actually kind of absorb into the, into the wood grains, leaving me um, a smoother surface to paint on. And so I get a little bit better line. As I go. So coming down over here to fill this little shoot off part. You guys can see that. And we're just going to like a really fun retro look. So it just becomes like a cool kind of beachy, oceany summer, summer vibe feeling art piece. I know we're really transitioning to fall soon. This is kind of my final hurrah before we send the kids off to school again and uh, start embracing fall and pumpkin spice lattes and all those good things. All right, so we're good there. Let me go ahead and just offload a little bit of that orange. I don't really need to rinse my brush. I suppose I could, but nah, why? So now we're just gonna grab some of the daffodil yellow and keep going. Gonna cover this white line with that daffodil yellow and just smooth it along. Smooth it along. Again, it goes much better and the coverage is a lot better when you have that white base. So again, I like the white gesso. And if you're new to me or you're like, what the heck is gesso? Well, here's my very ugly, messy bottle of it. Um, but it's basically surface preparation or even like a canvas primer. If you're buying a, a canvas from say Michaels, you really don't, or Hobby Lobby, you don't need to prime the canvas. But if you are say stretching your own canvas um, or working on like a, um, like a thirsty kind of paper or wood, sometimes gesso will help uh, create, well, gesso will help seal that surface a little bit and create a really good painting surface. So the other thing gesso does, which I love if I'm working with like cardstock or some slick paper, is it creates a little bit of texture 
or tooth, which um, makes it hold. It's which is great for like mixed media, especially if you're doing like uh, color pencils and uh, what are these things? Acrylics and all those stuff over top. Okay, so now we've got kind of this yellow vibe thing going on top. Again, I'm just gonna offload my brush, get as much of that color off as I can. Don't even bother rinsing. Grabbing hot pink. This is my deco art sizzling pink, one of my most favorites. I'm just gonna take that third line from up from the wave and do this. And so you could, you know, with almost any stencil that had kind of like a cool design, it doesn't even have to be waves, you could totally just embellish with crazy outlines and have fun with it, right? You don't have to do waves, but again, if you wanna know where the waves are, oh, hey, Angie. Oh, thank you. So Angie says, great job, love it, and love all your paintings. That's so nice of you. Hopefully this is one you can also follow along and do, or uh, you know, let me know if you wanna know where to get the stencil. I will share the link happily. I do not profit from it in any way, shape, or form. I just like to make sure that you guys know how to get the things I'm doing. If you're like, I really wanna create, recreate that, I'd really love to do that myself. And again, it's just from Amazon. And yeah, I'm kind of in love with this stencil. It showed up while I was on vacation and I was like, oh my gosh, can't wait to get my hands on it and play with it. Okay, so we've basically got that pink in. If you see a couple little spots where maybe there's a little white peeking through, we can come in. And again, we can kind of do a second coat after we've allowed this to dry. All right, go ahead and offload. I'm gonna actually now rinse this brush, give it a quick break. Hey, Pat, how's it going? Just doing a fun kind of goofy tutorial. All right, we're gonna grab the ever, ever popular thing I can't get away from, mermaid tail teal. Squeeze a little bit. Here, come on, there we go. And now I'm gonna move to a like quarter inch or smaller flat brush or square brush, whatever you want to call it. It's got those square tips. It's also sometimes known as a bright brush, depending on how long the bristles are. I don't think we need to get super caught up in the names. Um, it's just, you know, going to be helpful for you to have a sense of what shape you're grabbing for. And now I'm going literally over that white line at the edge, and I'm going to create kind of a teal, a teal blend on the sky. But I wanted a crisp edge, so, I'm so I used the gesso to create that crisp that crisp edge. And then I can kind of start to brush out from, from there a little bit at a time. In fact, sometimes this white looks even better when it, when it kind of blends in with the teal. There's some blendy blend, good. Keep going, I'll come along here. Just following it. And notice I haven't filled out the whole body of the sky yet, but I am gonna kind of blend the teal up. Now I could just keep that dark blue, but I'm just loving this mermaid tail, of course. Now, I'm gonna just wet my brush and start using a little bit of the water to kind of pull some of that mermaid tail color, no extra pigment, just pulling the color that's already there kind of up into the sky. Just using the water to pull the color. Blend it. Again, hoping that we're still gonna retain just a little bit of the wood, wood grain. And I'm gonna come through and just kind of pat it with my paper towel. Again, that's actually gonna lift a lot of that pigment, but we were trying to get a wash. And so we've got sort of the, oops. We've got the really solid line right at the edge where we put the gesso. Accidentally wiped some of that up. Boop. And then it just kind of blends off into something gentle along the way. All right. And that's pretty much it. I feel like I was a little bit sloppy on the, um, on the uh, stencil, so this is my original test piece. It came out a bit clearer. 
probably I needed to rinse the stencil beforehand. And if you feel like your stencil also got a little bit sloppy, you can always grab the, um, oh my gosh, my mouse keeps going over this. I don't see your stuff. <laughs> I'm glad you caught me too, Pat. All right, so I, I can actually take the white, the white uh, brush and maybe add a few swooshes and emphasis bits. I can even kind of wet my gesso so it's kind of a watery bit. We can add like little little touches in a few spots here to just kind of bring a little bit of the definition out. So some of the kind of almost rainbow wave lines we can kind of do emphasis on here. So even if you kind of don't nail it with your stencil, you can always bring it back to life and, and pretty it up a little here and there. Because I don't always nail it with stencils. And it's okay. Sometimes that kind of rough hand done look is super fun. So again, just adding little bits of white in, you know, on some of the edges over top of the paint, especially where things maybe got a little bit muddy, sort of to reemphasize where those lines were. And I've watered it down a bit just so that it goes on smoothly and quickly and doesn't seem super like lump, lumpy and chunky. And now my uh, inner circle members, which is my private membership, um, we've actually done another painting that's got waves on it, although that was all hand done and we didn't use a stencil, but it still kind of channels the same, the same feel. And that's this guy right over here with all these crazy waves. And so all my members get access to a lot of my exclusive designs. So if that's something that you're interested in, do let me know. Right now, doors are closed, but we will be opening them. Let's see, I want to say October, and I may do a flash sale or a few. If, yeah, um, a little bit earlier. I'm still trying to figure, figure that out, but definitely October. I can get you on our wait list to make sure we let you know when, when doors are open if you want to get in. And each member gets access to three brand new pro tutorial projects every single month. And they also get access to the full library of all the other designs I've previously released. So that way, if you're coming in and you're feeling like, oh, you know, it's fall and you've got all these great fall pro projects you did last year. Well, guess what? You can have access to them. And if you um, are a professional painter or you do paint parties in the same way that I do, um, my members actually receive a commercial license. So any of my original designs can be used for paint parties as well, if that's a way that you would like to go ahead and make money with this stuff. So it's a pretty rad investment. All right, so now that we've just added some white emphasis to some of the blue sections, it really pops up quite a bit. So Pat, I got the stencil from Amazon and as soon as I pop off, I will find the link and put it in the comments or reply to you so that you can, so that you can get it too if you want. So we'll just bring that a little bit closer. You can kind of see the wood grain is still showing up here. And then we have that kind of intense teal sea color. And then of course the it's almost like the sunlight glinting off of it in an endless summer kind of way. So I hope you guys had fun with this. And um, again, let me know. We just used scrap wood, total junk, very, very rough. It should be sanded, but I didn't even bother. So I just wanted to kind of whip something out that would be that would feel summery. Again, if you have any questions, pop some comments in and I will I will answer them as we go. Have a great day and we'll see you next time. Bye guys. And let me know if you're catching the replay.